Okay, so here's a quick discussion about ELIF statements in Python. All right, and so again, this is a, a topic that is covered not just in Python, it's it's something that you can use in pretty much any programming language. Uh, an ELIF, right, E-L-I-F, is short for else if, right? So this is an extension of our if statement conditionals that we've seen uh, in previous videos, right? Uh, we talked about if statements uh, that were just uh, some condition being met, and if that condition is true, then some code runs, right? And then we talked about if else statements, where we said if a condition is true, there will be some code. And if a condition is false, there'll be some other code, right? So we kind of uh, had a branching uh, set of, of circumstances where uh, two different possible bits of code could be run, right? So now what we're doing is we're saying, well, you know, there's definitely some situations where uh, there's not just two possible outcomes, true and false, there's a bunch of different possibilities, right? So I'm giving you an example right here uh, where if, if we're talking about a situation where you're going to the movies, uh, you might have a bunch of different possibilities, right? There's not just, uh, you know, like R and not R, right? There's the R rating, right? And there's a PG-13 rating, and there's a PG rating, and there's a G rating, right? So depending on how old you are, you might be allowed to see different movies, right? So here's our, our else if statement. We're going to say, if you are over 18, you can watch an R-rated movie. If you are over 13, you can watch a PG-13 movie. If you're over eight, you can watch a PG movie and then everybody can watch G-rated movies, right? So this is a kind of an if else if statement, right? If I wanted to kind of write this in, in Python form, here's what I'm gonna do, right? This is a little pseudocode, right? This is not entirely, um, you know, accurate as far as how we type it into to a program, but you can see that I'm saying, the first statement is if the age is greater than or equal to 18, then we're allowed to watch an R-rated movie, okay? And now I'm gonna use this new statement called elif, right? We're saying, Otherwise, here's a different condition, right? So here's the big change. An if statement has a condition. An else statement, this one at the bottom, does not have a condition. That's kind of like our catch-all where we're, we're saying like, if everything else is false, you can run this else statement. Elifs are kind of like the in-between. We're saying it's not the initial condition, right? If that one happens to be false, we're gonna give you another possibility with another condition. And if that one's false, we're going to give you another possibility with another condition, right? And then once we get down to this last else statement, we're saying if everything above it was false, here's the code I want you to run, right? So each of these statements has an if with a condition, and then there's some code that will be run if that condition is true, okay? And then if that condition is not true, if this first one being greater than or equal to 18 is false, then we'll move down to the next condition and we'll check that one. And then there will be some code that will run if that one's true. And we'll keep moving down the list until we find something that's true. If we fail on all of these conditions, that's what the else statement at the bottom is for, right? So this gives us a, a, an infinite number of possibilities of, of conditions we can check to try to make sure that we get the most specific you know, scenario that we want to happen for some code to run, okay? So we're gonna look at an example of this in CMU, right? So let's bring up our coding, okay? So here's our CMU example, right? So again, if we're looking at CMU, we can say, um, maybe we wanna start by looking at, let's do an on mouse press first, right? So we're gonna make an on mouse press uh, function, right? And we'll call it mouse X and mouse Y. Let's be more specific than the one I have written there, okay? So we're just checking for the mouse X and mouse Y, okay? And here's gonna be our condition. We're gonna say if X, okay? is, oh, I'm sorry, let's do mouse X. If the mouse X, when I click, is less than 100, okay, then I'm gonna run some code, right? We're gonna draw a circle, okay? And it's gonna uh, place the circle at mouse X, mouse Y, okay? And we're gonna make it a radius 30, and we'll make the fill equal to cyan, right? Nice cyan color, there we go, all right. So that's what's gonna run if it's less than 100. Let's, so let's just see what happens here, right? If I click, uh, in this area right here, you can see again, look in the bottom right corner where the X is located, right? When I'm less than 100, I'm getting this nice cyan colored circle. If I go over 100, I'm clicking right now. You may not be able to hear it, but I'm clicking. It's not working in any of these locations, right? So it's only going to uh, give me this circle when X is less than 100, right? So that works. That's good. But then I might say, okay, well, what happens if I'm doing less than 200, right? So let's do another one. Okay, so I got to remember when I hit enter, uh, it's giving me my... Um, my indented line, I need to back up once, right? Because this is going to be a new uh, if condition. So I'm going to say elif. Notice it turned purple, so I know I typed it correctly. And I'm going to say x is less than 200, right? So mouse x is less than 200. Okay, and then I can just have a different condition. So let's uh, let's take this same circle here, okay? 
and we're going to go down indent over so this is where our code's going to be okay this one we're going to make this one purple okay so purple okay so now here's what happens when i run this so let's think about it like as it's actually happening if i click right here right in the uh the x is less than 100 spot this first statement is going to evaluate to true and this one's going to run and then the whole if statement's done okay here's the big thing about else ifs it's only going to evaluate one of these statements right so if i have an if and an else if okay when the if statement comes out to be true it is not going to check any of the conditions below it we're done with that if statement and it's going to move on to like the, the next bit of code outside of the ifs okay so if, if this first one runs and it's true it's going to run that code over okay if i go to the purple let's go to where it's not less than 100 right this is going to evaluate to false right so if i come over here now now it's giving me a purple circle so let's think about what's happening it's saying is mouse x less than 100 no it's not because my my mouse was at like 168 it looks like right 150 something right so this one's false so then it moves down to the else if and it's going to check again it's going to say is mouse x less than 200 well yeah it is 150 something is less than 200 right so that's going to evaluate it to true and it's going to run this code okay but it's only going to run the first one that it sees, right? So if I do another one and say, L if mouse X is less than 300, okay? And we do a circle there, okay? And we'll make this circle um, teal, right? Teal's a nice color, okay? So now let's see if I run it. So if I click on this purple area now, and I'm going to say, okay, 139, okay? It gave me a nice purple uh, circle because it said less than 100. Well, 139 is not less than 100. That's false. Is it 139 less than 200? That's true. So it drew me a purple circle. And then it didn't run this one at all, right? It didn't even try to check that because it's only going to run the first true statement that it comes up with. So if I do go into this, like let this 238, for example, that is not less than 100, false, not less than 200, false, but it is less than 300. So that's the one that runs, right? And then if I wanted to kind of say, okay, well, what happens if like none of those are true? If it's not less than 100, not less than 200, not less than 300, right? And I just say else, right? Notice I'm not putting a condition, okay? Else does not have a condition. This is the thing that's gonna run when everything else does not work, right? Maybe we'll do a nice gold one here, okay? So now if I run this total program, okay? I can see that depending on where I'm clicking, I'm going to get different colored circles and it's checking each of these in order, right? So when I got this gold one at the end, which is kind of looks like it's centered about 360, right? 360 less than 100. That's false. 360 less than 200. That's false. 360 less than 300. That's false. This is the one that ran, right? So it's only running one at a time, okay? But we also are going to check each of them starting at the top and working our way down through the, the code, okay? So this is a good example, I think, of an if statement, right? So, uh, something to kind of consider as you're going through it, okay? So here's something that's gonna be important about if statements, okay? Order matters, right? And when you're writing your if statements, you're always gonna wanna write the most specific case first, okay? And you might be saying, well, what do I mean by the most specific case first? All right, so let's go back to our code real quick, okay? I'm saying that mouse X being less than 100 is the most specific case. Because if you think about the canvas, if I say less than 200, right, I'm covering everything from zero to 200. If I'm saying, uh, you know, less than 300, I'm covering everything from zero to 300, right? So when I'm talking about mouse X is less than 100, I'm saying that is the most specific condition because it's the one that covers the least amount of the canvas, right? And the reason that I'm doing that, right, is because... Uh, this 200 one, this one below it, uh, it does cover less than 100 as well, but we're only ever going to run this if less than 100 already came out to be false, if that makes sense, right? So what we're kind of saying is this else if here, right, the one uh, right here is really only covering from 100 to 200. And the reason for that is because one, we know that it's not in this space, right? If it was in this space here, right, it would have already executed a T or I'm sorry, a cyan circle, right? So because I ran this code here, right, for purple, I know that the zero to 100 was false, which means I'm really somewhere between 100 and 200, okay? But if I flip these, right, if I made this one 200 and this one 100, okay, 
something like that. Okay. Now I'm not sure, like if I run this, right, it's actually going to run cyan here and cyan here. And the reason for that is because it's like, well, I don't know, like, are you between zero and 100 or are you between 100 and 200? I'm not sure because zero to 200 is very broad, right? I didn't check the more specific zero to 100, right? And that's why I'm kind of getting this issue. So you can see like, all I did was I, I'm still checking each condition, right? But I'm I'm getting a, a completely different program because, right, the other one's still run fine, but I'm getting a completely different program because I did the, the broader one first and then the more specific one second. And that's generally not the way we want to do things, right? So um, just to kind of a heads up as you're going through this, that you're going to want to do the most specific one first, right? The smallest little chunk, usually like zero to 100 or like, you know, starting at the beginning and doing a small chunk and then doing a much bigger chunk and then doing a bigger one as you go through these programs, okay? So that's the end of our else if statements, right? If, if you found this helpful, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button. And if you have any questions about any else if programs, uh, whether they be CMU programs or not, uh, please po post that into comments. And I'm happy to help uh, help you with that. I do monitor my comments every single day uh, and I'll, I'll uh, answer your questions there. Okay, have a good day.